Oh, hi, it's your old buddy Zoo here, and today we're reviewing a prototype of the Game Bub. This is an open source FPGA handheld for Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance. I don't normally like to review prototypes because I can't really tell you how the finished product is gonna feel or how it's gonna work, but this one just went up on Crowd Supply. They're about 25% filled up on orders as of filming, and I figured that since the developer was willing to loan me a model, I could at least test it out for anyone on the fence. One thing to keep in mind as we go through the video is that this is a legitimate prototype. It's not one of those situations where they send me something that's maybe 99% done and then they might tweak it at the end. I don't know if you can see it, but this is made out of different material than the finished version is gonna use. It's not perfect, it's not meant to be. So if you're watching this and you see maybe some gaps in the shell or the buttons look a little bit off, it's because these buttons are 3D printed. This is just some slapdash stuff he put together in his house, I think. The final product will be injection molded and all fancified, but this is a real, honest to God prototype. With that being said, let's hop on in and review the Game Bub. The Game Bub is an FPGA handheld, kind of like the analog pocket, except this one is completely open source. I know that's a big deal for some people, so we'll talk about that in depth later. As an FPGA device, the Game Bub plays your collection of physical Game Boy and Game Boy Advance cartridges. It supports link cables. It allows you to capture save files from your original carts. You can buy a dock for it separately. It has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Rumble, a real-time clock, an accelerometer, a gyroscope, and a partridge in a pear tree. In addition to having high accuracy cores and accepting original carts, the Game Bub can also play ROMs from the SD card. You can see it tucked in up there. So there's no need for you to buy an extra flash cart. The Game Bub is also built with an eye towards expandability. By utilizing an Artix XC7A 100T FPGA as its core, the Game Bub is more powerful than it needs to be. The most strenuous core on here, the Game Boy Advance one, only uses a third of this chip's power. There have already been some core creators who have expressed interest, so we could see some SNES on here, maybe some other systems pretty quickly. I think it might even have the raw power to play a little bit of N64, except there's no analog stick, so that might be, uh, that might be an issue. But SNES or Genesis on here would be pretty cool. Let's take a quick look at the device itself. It has Bluetooth, 2.4G Wi-Fi, a 4-inch 720 by 480 LPS LCD screen, which is actually pretty good for Game Boy Advance because you get 3x pixel perfect integer scaling. It's also a good combo screen that'll do Game Boy, 4x3 content, pretty much anything that this FPGA will be able to run. It's got four face buttons, a decent D-pad. I mean, it's 3D printed, but it's not bad. You got start, select, a menu button, and triggers. There's no L2 or R2, and since you're playing Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games, you don't really need it for input. Since there's no emulator menu beyond just this basic back out, you don't even need those buttons for hotkeys. Now, four buttons on here initially seem kind of confusing because it's a Game Boy or a Game Boy Advance machine, and these top buttons don't do anything for Game Boy or Game Boy Advance. But like I said, this is expandable, so I'd rather have them here than not, especially if I want to play SNES or Genesis on here in the future. You've got 3,000 milliamp hours of charge separated between these two batteries, which is really intense for FPGA. You're going to get like 12 to 14 hours off of a full charge, so this is literally an all-day device. It's a little big, a little bulky size-wise, but the weight is only nine ounces, so it's not too heavy. I would really like to see future revisions continue to shrink the form factor down a little bit, maybe get rid of this massive bezel and focus more on the screen, but this thing is made by a single guy using PCBWay or something, and he made the whole thing from scratch. It's really impressive. Speaking of the creator of this, he's some fella that goes by the name of Eli, and the return label he sent is right by Harvard. So it stands to reason that he's wicked smart. You gotta be wicked smart to make something like this, especially fully open source, because all of your code is in the wind for people to pick at. And if we know anything about the community, people will pick at things. People get real particular about open source and GPL and all that nonsense. And since GameBub is fully open source, that means everything about it is licensed under GPL version three for software, and by CCBYSA 4.0 for hardware. 
That ensures that modifications are shared right back to the community so that everybody can benefit. All the source code for this is available and there's nothing to stop you from expanding upon it. Now this might not mean much to someone who just wants a 35XX and bulks at the cost difference, but if you're really concerned about GPL, this is a good opportunity to put your money where your mouth is. And you know what? Let's talk about putting your money where your mouth is because this is a $250 handheld. There's a transparent purple option for 300, but we're gonna say this is around $250. Now for $250, you can get a flip too. You can get four to five 35XX pluses or MiU minis. Heck, when you're talking about that $300 model, you can get a refurbished Odin 2 Max for the same price. So why would you wanna spend $250 to $300 on a thing that plays Game Boy and Game Boy Advance? Well, sir, FPGA devices offer a couple advantages over emulation that kind of justifies their price to some users. Using an FPGA device to play games offers a much more authentic experience compared to using an emulator. The primary advantage is that FPGA recreates the exact hardware of the Game Boy or Game Boy Advance. You can see, it's, it's reading the cart. By implementing the original CPU and memory and graphics processing directly through hardware, FPGAs run the games just as the original system would with no software-based interpretation or emulation involved at all. This means you're not relying on the potential inaccuracies or limitations of a pure emulator. Every frame, sound, and interaction is processed exactly as it would have been on the original device. A lot of people really value that accuracy. I'm fine with emulators, but I can honestly see the appeal, especially when you consider the screen on this versus the screen on that. Pew. Another reason to use an FPGA device over an emulator device is the benefit of reduced latency and improved performance. Emulators, even on modern handheld devices, introduce some small degree of lag just due to the software layer between the game code and the hardware. In contrast, FPGA systems run games at the same real-time speeds as the original console. That results in smoother gameplay, more precise controls, and zero input lag. I know that's a huge deal for some people. And for fast-paced games or platformers that require precise timing, this can make a significant difference in gameplay quality, offering a much more responsive and enjoyable experience. Wow! Uh... And then lastly, these FPGA devices are a huge deal to people who have actual game carts. If you already got 100 Game Boy cartridges lying around, you might as well use them. I don't really notice latency and a lot of other issues in the moment while I'm using an emulator, but playing a game on here and then playing it on something like the 40XXV, it, it makes it obvious. The original cart is a hair snappier. It's a hair more responsive and it's a hair more authentic. If that's important to you, and you want to support someone who, to my knowledge at least, isn't an arms dealer, then the game bub might be worth the cost. As you could see from the footage in the previous segment, and you can see it here, I compared the real games on the game bub to the 40XXV, and by and large, the screens are pretty comparable. I have this thing maxed out and integer scaling is off, and so that's why the Game Boy is a little smaller. But the game bub just feels more authentic. It's got to be a combination of lower latency and all the other features of FPGA, but I can feel it, I really can, especially side by side. Now, I don't know if I'm ever gonna switch to FPGA all the way because I do like retro achievements and I'm always being interrupted, so I gotta have save states. But the game bub has me really thinking about going more authentic, at least for games where I have the cart readily available. And the device itself actually feels really good, especially for a prototype. I would like some grippy pads here on the back, or maybe a ridged edge like they had on the real Game Boy or the 40XXV here. Just something to help hold on to the giant candy bar. If there's still time to make some slight changes before this goes into mass production, I'd honestly like a bigger D-pad and maybe some slightly bigger buttons. The shape and orientation of this device really lets you snap those carts in and they're locked in and they're, they're relatively stable, even if I'm trying to shake it like a lunatic. And the overall shape and size of the device are pretty good, but I, I would like that D-pad and those face buttons to be a little bit bigger. This was originally gonna be a vertical device, but they switched it right before the crowdfunding. And I don't know, I like vertical devices a lot, so I might've appreciated the original design more, but this isn't bad. I've had far worse from China, 
And this is still a prototype, so the overall feel of it will only be better, even if they don't change the design at all. This also came, to me at least, with a dock. The dock is an extra 50 bucks if you want to order it, but it's cool, especially since the dock has Bluetooth. It's easy to use as well. You plug in the dock, then you slot your device into the dock, and boom, you're on your TV or your monitor or whatever. I'm not big into docking for handheld games. Like, I didn't even really like the Super Game Boy when I had it, even with those cool bezels. But if you do like docking, if you're a docker, this is easy to use and quick to get up and running. Well, Gary, it's time for What Did We Learn? And we learned that our boy Eli from Boston is wicked smat and made a wicked cool FPGA device called the Game Bub. It's not cheap, but it's hyper accurate, and it's as close to real hardware as you're going to get. If you're an absolute budget gamer, then this probably isn't for you. Get a MiU Mini or an R36 or one of the XX line from Ambernick. But if you are interested in FPGA, this is definitely something you should check out. This thing is a prototype, but honestly, it has way less issues than I anticipated. So I have a lot of faith in the final product. It's also something that's fully open source, both with software and hardware, which means you could source the parts and build this on your own if you wanted. You could make the vertical version if you wanted to. All the, all the plans are online. It's also made by a single dude, and I don't know, in a space where I'm sending a lot of my money to some CCP-owned factory, it's kind of a neat idea to think this is being built in some sort of techno-Yankee workshop in New England. Except this guy's named Eli instead of Norm Abram. Remember Norm from PBS? I still watch this old house. It helps offset the cost of the money pit I call home. If these videos help you offset the money pit called a retro handhelds addiction, then remember to like and subscribe and all that jazz. We're headed into the fall, which means a lot of new devices in time for Christmas, and we'll be here every step of the way, letting you know about everything new, from $30 e-waste to more expensive FPGA options like the Game Bub here. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.